Nine fifty six. Give me one moment, so. Um, take your time, bro. Yeah, this is fucking. <clears throat> take your time. We're not in a rush. Last one was very high energy. This one's gonna be very low. Welcome to Sup Podcast, episode fifty-seven, the Hungover Edition. Isn't it fifty-nine? Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. We've never gotten it right. <laughs> no, after after last week, fucking Isaiah trying to talk shit. I'm gonna remember every episode now. My fucking uh, show you the, the plug that works at uh, Nordstrom. She hit me up because she told me to come through to the fucking. Oh, what'd you get? I didn't. I didn't know. I told her I was so. I was so messed up. Oh, oh, we recorded. Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> oh, let me. This is about the proper way to start this episode. I, I don't think this is the perfect way. To start, <laughs> you know, but nah, she hit me up. She was like, "Come through," because they had a they had like a soft, like launch party or whatever today. Oh, for the new store. For the new store, and I'm like, I'm such a dodo head that I didn't go, but uh, it was uh, a live set from uh, DJ uh, Stretch and Bobito was there. Oh, really? Yeah, I should have pulled up. You but. definitely should have pulled up. I know. Stretch and Bobito. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. Oh geez. Yeah, no, I should have pulled up, but it's whatever. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, you know, these, you know, these things always, you know. Yeah. When you, you know, <laughs> I know I'm not even making sense of it. <laughs> you uh, know, guys, we had a late night last night. That is, this one is going to be low energy. I mean, was it? I mean, you know, listen, it's whatever. I'm alive. And, we uh, had later nights, but that's what I'm saying. That was yeah. a good one. That was. That was. Should we talk about it? Nah. Why do we have All to right. be so inside baseball? These people don't. You know. <laughs> Listen, they they want to hear they want to hear the sneakers they want to hear the and then they sometimes they want to hear our fuck ups in life you know yeah that's true no but last night we were we were out doing karaoke it was it was a good time um all right well, hold on let's have a formal start to episode of the sup podcast number fifty nine why are you getting tall like that you didn't like my I intro <laughs> no I, lo- I don't I don't know <laughs> you did say the wrong number uh, yeah, welcome did. to sup podcast episode fifty nine fifty nine um, welcome all right Tanner take it away this is all oh, you now shit. buddy okay this is too much now all right I am <laughs> Tanner little kinky sixty nine um to, uh, to my angle I have <laughs> Lawrence Deloach. Uh, LZD two three five. He's oh, taking some oh, uh, three, two, five. three two five. Three two five. I said that. You said two three five. But whatever. <laughs> he, he, was, he was starting to do pi. He was like LZD three point one four five six. And to my straight ahead is Becky with Blicky. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> she can play this as easy three. That was and, atrocious. <laughs> and to my right, I have Chris Cheney. Cheney uh, chains the hang low. Do they wobble? Do they flow? Chain. Do they shine in the light? Is it platinum? Not is that it gold? Um, can you throw them over your shoulder? We, if you have we to got go? so much to talk about today. We um, do, including shoes and maybe a t-shirt. <laughs> Take you're, you're introing every wow. episode from now on. I can't on. believe that Tanner has more energy and finesse than us right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am sweating. <laughs> 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 Take it away, boys. <laughs> no, but going back to the North Star, <laughs> Lawrence's face right now. <laughs> uh, no, going back to the Nordstrom thing. So uh, for, to give background, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Nike and Nordstrom have a men's boutique that they just opened up here in New York City. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe they have six women's boutiques that they open, but this is the first men's one. Is that correct? Uh, Does that sound right? I'm not sure. Okay, that's great. I just, uh, I, I just know I got invited to a party that I didn't go to like an idiot. Yo, I got to meet this plug because when you don't pull up, I'll pull up. <laughs> Uh, okay. You're nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> did they have uh so Stretch and Bobby were there? Do they have a shoe or a capsule that they have specifically for the launch? Or to, to be honest, I didn't even ask. Like when she, I should have just been like, but I didn't want to be like, what y'all have? What y'all got there? Because I want like nah, that's true. I, you know, I just was like, she, you know, it was like come through, and then I just couldn't. I couldn't make it. But whatever. I'm fucking. That's good. Uh, plug etiquette. Never ask. Yeah, you don't want to be like, what y'all got? What y'all got? I want to, y'all got, y'all got off-white? Nah, you just be like, all right, cool. And 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 then if you blessed by the gods, you blessed by the gods. Yeah. Shout out to the uh, plug gods. Speaking of being blessed by the gods, uh, Nike uh, had a shock drop this week of the uh, uh, the bread fours. Should I call them bread? Or what, what do we call them? I guess they're bread fours, yeah. They're bread fours, right? Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and that they're going to release on uh, May 4th. And uh, a lot of people got through. Star Wars Day. Uh, May 4th is Star... Uh, that's the May sat- the 4th be with you. 
Oh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, May 4th, the uh, the Bread Fours are coming out. They, they, guys, if you don't even overpay, don't, don't fucking pay extra money to have them a week or two early. They're going to be in an abundance. And everyone that pretty much wants a pair should be able to get a pair. You getting a pair? Yeah, I'm going to get one, I think. You want a pair? Yeah, I want one. Yeah. Tan, no, they're not, there's no yellow in it. Tan is like, fuck it. Fuck it. I would love to see you in any Jordan. Now that I think about it, you're out here buying champion shoes and shit for like 20 bucks just because they have Whoa. yellow. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, I'm frugal. <laughs> um, I am afraid of wearing ba- ba- actual shoes. <laughs> Be- Why? Becky, you getting a pair? You want a pair of these? They're nice, Beck. They're okay. Oh, wow. I like the ones with the uh, glitter speckled fabric on the side better. Mm-hmm. That like uh, animal print thingy. Oh, wait, which one are you talking about? Doesn't Al have them today? Oh, the oh the Jordan 3s, the cement 3s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, th- those, I mean, those are mm-hmm. two like, probably like of the most iconic Jordans. So like, you know, you see like certain elements of the design on, on the 4s that was like done in the 3s. Yeah. But uh, I think if you had to choose one, what's what do you think is would you have would you rather have the fours or the cement threes, threes or the four the bread fours? Yeah, <sighs> that's a tough one. I guess I would go with threes. I think the threes are probably if you look at like if you say like top five Jordans of all time, I yeah. think cement threes are up there. Yeah, like bread ones, bread fours, Concord they're, they're all bread or you know, yeah, Chicago, Chicago colors. based colors, yeah. Yeah, so, but like, I'm I'm excited about I'm excited about the fours. I definitely want a pair of those because I had the, the 2012 joints, and those were some of the worst constructed. <laughs> really? yeah, no, no, like seriously, like people, like they were, the midsole would chip. So like so this like this black part right here, like above the midsole would just chip. Like the paint would chip, and it was like poorly constructed, and so many people were upset about the quality. What year was that? 2012. 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yep. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be one of the weirdest episodes. No. Nah, Our fans are going to hate us. Nah, we We're starting. bringing like 40% of the heat. No, I'm going to bring 125. No, nah, we starting out strong. We yeah. good. They fucking. We, it's, a, it's like a, it's like an airplane. Like you know, does the airplane like are like automatic? Right. It's just it's just delayed on the runway right now. Yeah, but we we're gonna delayed. take off. We taking off. It's just a little rocket, but it's starting out good. We giving out a lot of information. Oh, there's just turbulence. Yeah, people fucking with it. Trust me, Chris. Trust me. People that's listening, they like, yo, you right. Brad Ford's 2012. I remember my shit's got messed up. <laughs> <laughs> they excited. <laughs> they excited. But now nah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I think the day before the. Uh, uh, the Travis Scott Air Jordan ones are coming out. Yeah. Yes. So basically, everyone that strikes out on the Travis Scotts because everyone's gonna fucking strike out. Yep. They're gonna be like, well, you know, here's your consolation prize: these Jordan fours that you can have in abundance. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I won't. I haven't had a pair. I had a pair of fours a while ago, but I haven't had one in a while. So yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna grab those. Yeah. But they're classic too. Even if I don't wear them for a while, I'll just have them. Yeah, just hold. Just it's hold an easy them. cop. It doesn't make sense not to get them. Nah, it's a. I've I've been pretty. I've been copying a lot of like the OG colors, like Concord Elevens, the infrared sixes, the the cement threes, like whatever is like an OG colorway. Yeah, I can't really like venture out into like those like new colors at times. Yo, I saw a headline. Um, I didn't read the article, but I read the headline. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I don't think we talked about it last week, but they're saying that the Concord are like dad shoes now. Like all Elevens are dad shoes. I actually hate. I actually, I don't like the Elevens. Really? Nah. I used Wait, to. Wait, what about them? I used to love them when I was a kid. Like when I was like, to me, they're like they're like shoes for like no disrespect, but like, like, what's the best? Like high school kids. If you in high school, you want some shiny patent leather to yeah. look fly. Yeah. But if you as you as you get older, you're like, I don't like. The I don't like the 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 patent leather really does call attention, and I get what you're saying. As you're older, it should be like su- subtle fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just think I just think it's yeah. It's you know if you're gonna wear a Jordan, I think you know pretty much there's only a certain few numbers that you can at this point wear, and as like you know streetwear or like not streetwear, but as 
you know, like when you get older, it's like you either you're wearing a, a one, a three, a four, a six, maybe an eight, maybe a twelve. I don't even like. I think I think as anything after honestly, I think anything after nine, like ten, eleven, twelve, like all those. When I was younger, yeah, I used to love the twelves. I used to love the thirteens, but like I can't, I couldn't see myself really wearing a lot of the older, the newer models, or not the newer models, but yeah, like, I get what you're saying. You know, yeah. Yeah, I guess after yeah, when the nine came out, I was kind of like, ooh, this is a little switch up. Well, that's kind of where the cutoff is, maybe. Yeah, I think, I, but yeah, I still, I mean, I still keep like, a, I'll still keep a pair of Jordan Elevens, like in the yeah, closet. Of course. But yeah, I got gotcha. you, Becky. What's your thoughts on like patent leather on sneakers? Um, I like it. It depends on the design. I mean, God, my brain is so dead. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all no, good. it's all good. No, I like, I like it. To me, it can be a little bit like dance recital y in girls' oh, shoes. Hilarious. A little bit. That's mm-hmm. an interesting way to put that. Like, it just sometimes, like, certain fabrics just remind me vividly of like the childhood things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'd probably stay away from it for that reason. But I, I have seen people wearing Concords and they look really nice. Yeah. I, like I said, I think the Concords were the one, like, my favorite Air Jordan 11. Because I think, like, if you look at the Concords, this is literally, like, prom. People wear them to proms and yeah. graduations yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. weddings. Like, definitely yeah, weddings. You, it just <laughs> reminds you of feeling uncomfortable. Yeah, like, Big J has a pair of those. Sal got them for him for R- Christmas. Okay. Really? Yeah. That's hilarious. And he looks great because mm-hmm. he's got, like, a size 14 shoe. And mm-hmm. they're just, like, they're massive and, like, striking. Yeah, I think I think this is the I think this is the one Jordan. This and then the black and red colorway. Of the 11s, I think people, obviously, it, it, it brings everyone into it. Like, what's so funny about 11s, though, and, and we just, told, and like, we just, even though we said, like, ah, they're like the dad shoe, it brings out, when I was picking up my Concords, it literally was, like, dudes who was, like, 40 years old, like, yo, I remember when I had these shits back in 95. Ah, uh, gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It brought, it brings back the old heads. Yeah. yeah definitely. Because that's the that's the shoe that I think so many people can remember from their childhood. You know that they're like, "Yo, I remember these are Jordan Wardies and Space Jam." Yeah, 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 definitely. You know what I'm saying? So I think the Eleven is an iconic shoe. Uh, is it? Can it go head to head against a Jordan One or Jordan Three? The more the more you were talking about this, I guess I agree with you. I yeah, because it's not that there's not many subtle colorway, colorways, and we definitely don't shine that much you know what i mean it's definitely like a young kid shoe or like the old heads come back to get it dude I, like i said man it's like you know you got dudes i know dudes from the hood and they be like yo son fucking them patent leathers is coming out for christmas because it's the christmas shoe yeah. yeah so it's literally like all right you know they're gonna make a million of these shoes and you know and it's so funny because we talking seven eight years ago jordan was making a patent 11 Christmas, they would make it super limited where people just couldn't get it. And then you would see people losing their life over it. That's that's another value of how crazy a shoe is. How many people willing to die for a fucking Jordan? And people would die over 11s all the time, which yeah. is sad. It's, it's not even of like, course. it's not even like I'm trying to be funny or anything. It's just like that's how crazy that shoe was. Yeah. And it is still yeah. to this day, you know? Yeah. Now I want a pair. <laughs> Did you talk now, into it? Now I'm like, I I'm such I'm so full of shit. <laughs> I was just I, I brought up the topic to kind of just like defend them, but also I was agreeing with you that they're kind of like whatever. But now I'm like, no, now I want one. <laughs> you know, I, I, like I said, I think if you 11s, it's the Concords, the black and red Space Jams, and the cool cool grays. To this day, I never forget. I was in high school and they came out 2001. And bro, the fights that occurred and they sold out so fast. I, that was the first time I was like, "Damn!" Like this Jordan Eleven hype is real. Speaking of Jordans, uh, <laughs> there's a rumor going around. I think it's I think it's actually been confirmed that the uh, Jordan One uh, quote unquote band colorway is coming back out for. Oh uh, yeah, Friday. I saw that. Mm-hmm. It's uh, how many how many variations are we gonna have? I don't know, but and also, why are people finding this out now? Black Friday is so far away. Jordan always does that. But even though it's Black Friday, I mean, you know the four, you know a lot of the fourth quarter major leaks that come out. Yeah, because there's always when you know even we're in April, you know the Christmas Jordan, and you know the you supposed you should know the Black Friday Jordan because that's like the two big ones. Do people care about the band still? Of course, do they? Yeah, oh. it's it's just funny that this is like probably like the this is probably like the 
tenth time that they're coming out. Yeah. Remember when they came out and they didn't tell anybody? They somehow kept it secret? What do you mean? There was one drop where some like a, a select store just got them in and they didn't oh, tell the, anybody. The, the band, the actual band with the X on the back. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it would. I guess the the quote unquote story behind it is they uh, they messed up uh, their B grades. Yeah. So they messed up on something. I think the year inside of the shoe. So they put them in certain um, factory store. Uh, you know uh, the. What do they call those? The employee stores? Not the employee outlets? stores. Outlets. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. So they put them in different outlets. and um, But the quality of the leather was so crazy and because it, this was like, I think, 2000, I'm going to say 11, that these bands came out with the X on the back, Red X. And they became like a cult status, bro. Like, we talking, people were just like flipping these shoes for like twelve, thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. Yeah, I was in college, and then so- someone was telling me about him, and I was like, "What? I didn't hear about any of this shit." And then, like, every- yeah, everyone was flipping out. Yeah, because like I said, they they were only at a certain outlets, uh, and you know, they they literally had like grail stat because they we got to realize there weren't too many, uh, there weren't too many Jordan ones uh, prior to that one mm-hmm. that band because the the one before that was two thousand and one. They did a a black and red colorway. Yeah. Okay. And they were like quote unquote numbered and all that other shit. Yeah. And then we didn't get enough. And then prior to that, it was ninety four. And prior to that, it was the the OGs in eighty five. So yeah, eighty five, ninety four. Wow. 01. I didn't realize the gap in between all that. It was a. It was literally two thousand eleven. And then people were like, "All right, we need a a proper release." So then it became two thousand thirteen was the black and red which was insane Mm -hmm. because everyone was like i can't pay fifteen hundred dollars for a fucking pair of bands yeah it's ridiculous but they're like let's get these 2013 and the 2013 jordan they had the ones that they did royals uh black toes they had a bunch of like sneakers that they had the i don't know if you remember the black and gold patent leathers i do they were like an east coast like foot action yeah i do remember those i'm just two grand it's ridiculous yeah, so it's gonna be like this, and then the 2016 was also it's part of Glittergate. Wait, which, Glittergate? Glitter, uh, Glittergate. Wait, uh, remind me of this one. Black Jordan ones has if you prop if it's not properly stored, a lot of times it gets like the glitter mold on it. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a lot of people have that sour taste in their mouth. What are you gonna say about? What's glitter mold? It's basically, <laughs> I have and I have this on a pair, a couple pair of my shoes. I guess the leather that Nike used. To make the Jordan ones, the black leather over time when it's not either when it's not worn or it's like stored in like certain conditions will uh, it will it will like this mold. It's like a, a glitter will like be on the black. Parts it would basically of the just look like there's a slight glitter, glitter tint to it. Yeah. It's sparkly mold? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, my God. No, no. That's so much better than what I thought it was. <laughs> no, this is... It's that, not good. You don't want this. No, you don't want it. Okay. You're wearing mold on your feet. You don't want that. You don't want that. And it, it got to the point where people, like, you know, all the... You know, so some people have certain joints that are thousands of dollars, and it has now they're glitter, glitter on, it. on it. It's not like a good... Like, if you have a glittery shoe, it's kind of like, oh, you fucked up. That's mold all over it. Like, if you saw it, you'd probably be like, oh, I like these. Okay. But me and Elle, we're like, oh, shit, you literally wearing mold right now. Oh, um, okay. I mean, you can bring the, the glitter train back. Maybe you can pioneer the uh, glitter mold hype. I just thought it was shoes with glitter sections that were getting mold growing in the glitter. <laughs> no. But mold that's actually glitter is pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. I I have it on uh I unfortunately I have it on a pair of fra- on a pair of fragments. No oh, fragments, yeah. They have glitter on it and it pisses me off. But it, which one, the ones? And there's yeah, nothing the ones. you can do. Yeah. They, so there's a lot of supposed solutions like uh like leather uh wipes like the the they, they, the cleaners and stuff like that. Yeah. And um and then there's other solutions too. But I feel like it's very I'm very scared to put it. On. I'm gonna test it out. Well, I think you, you can do it. The you have to condition your leather though. Hmm. I like think you should be doing that every year anyway. Every even every season would be better. I mean, that's think of how many shoes me and L have. Yeah, I know, but like that's how you care for leather. That's true. Um no, but I think you could do what the custom guys do is you can t- take off that strip of like protective sealant they have on there. Mm-hmm. Um with like the paint thinner and that, I think it should go away. I, I think I remember doing that to a pair that I had. Maybe I'm full of shit. I'm probably full of shit. 
but it might let's try it. <laughs> let's just give it a go. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna test it out on I, I, I have I have it on like I think two or three and it's only it's Jordan ones and it's only the black leather, not yeah. like so like you know, the white leather or whatever, orange, whatever other leather you have, it's solid. Yeah. But just the black parts. Maybe we can't see it if it's happening on the other ones. Like maybe like the it's just a still molding, but there's no glitter to it. On the like the white or the orange and shit. No, it, it, from what I've heard, it's just literally oh, really? their right. black leather. It's like that's what makes like sneakers so. That's why I've said this plenty of times. It's like, you know, you have these people with these crazy collections, and it's like, either wear your shits or sell your shits. Like, but to have them just like in some glass case, like this is, they're gonna crumble. They're gonna destroy. Yeah. yeah. You got to do something. Then we got to hit up Isaiah and go like, yo, can you help me, dog? Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, speaking of weird Nike stuff, I guess, um, I saw that they were trying to trademark the word footwear, but it was spelled W-A-E-R instead of W-E-A-R. Footwear, yeah. Well, I think, why? Because of the... Uh, the Just because you have the f- verbiage footwear trademarked. So you could say footwear and it's like yours. Because of the, the quote unquote software that they're using with yeah. the new Nike technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> it would be for the React stuff, right? Yeah, for yeah, because it's, it's software for what? Yeah, it would be for like the shoes that use the actual app. What do they call the f- technology they have with the because uh, they have the watch app that's that's connected to the bottom of some of the soles on the running stuff? Mm-hmm. What, what is that called? Plus Nike Plus or something? Yeah, I think that yeah Nike Plus. Are they going to rebrand all the Plus stuff to be the footwear shit? I don't know. I'm not in the board meetings, but no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> sorry. I was just thinking out loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not in the Wait, board meetings. So you're not getting the memos? I'm not getting the memos. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I, I'll forward them to you. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little kinky in there as their main consultant for the, <laughs> for the millennial youth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine, imagine Tanner at a Nike meeting. <laughs> oh, that shit is great. I think you'd have a lot to contribute. <laughs> it's, More yellows. It's a lot of investment into this new technology, so I'm very interested to see what they do with it, though. Yeah, because that, that means they're going to try to get that reaction like all over the place. Well, yeah, I think I think that's probably part of their their game. Yeah, plan. definitely. You know, you, you got to realize. I mean, right now, three hundred fifty dollar sneaker with the auto lace technology is kind of it's very expensive and i think as they continue they'll figure out like cheaper methods or ways to bring that cost down slightly yeah i think there's no way you can i mean 350 dollars shoe who's buying how many people are really buying that just to play basketball people out of our tax bracket for sure dude people yeah there's one of my one of my friends bought them i gotta ask him how how um the shoe he i don't think he's played basketball in them yet but he definitely has them he bought them he's just wearing them around well, I mean, you know, once again, it's a, it's a big, it's a novelty. Remember, like, yeah. what what are we talking? Uh, the back, the uh, Air Mags or whatever, the Mags? Yeah. And then what? Then they had uh, the Earls or whatever. They had the, uh, that was like auto lacing, remember? And that, okay. But that was like $700. Yeah, that was a lot. And then now we're we're at a 350 quote unquote reasonable yeah. clip. Yeah. Yeah, all right, they're getting there. Yeah, I, you know, I forgot about the middle one. I, I just remember mags, and I, didn't, I forgot about the seven hundred dollars ones. Yeah, what was it the hyper that, adapts or something? Yeah, like the, yeah, because then so they did the mags, and then they did the mags with the auto lacing, and I think around the same time that's when that dropped in was seven hundred bucks. That was a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Damn. there's a lot of fucking money for sneakers. Yeah, hyper adapt self lacing shoes. Yeah, but it was very expensive. And you uh, got those up on stock? How much are they on stock? Oh, and I didn't pull up on stock, but I okay. will pull it up on GOAT since I have GOAT right here. All right, cool. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out where to go here. I'm looking at the topics. Uh, I kind of want to talk about the Van Sweet Chick collab. Did you see that? No. Mm-mm. It's fucking awesome. Okay. <laughs> Is the, uh, I'll pull them up. Dude, because, you know, I've been praising stories here for the long t- longest time um so sweet chick for those who don't know is a uh chicken and waffle place here in new york city mm-hmm. and uh they're doing a collab with van so it's a sweet chick official branded thing and one of the biggest things that vans is known for is the waffle bottom mm, okay right so the marketing campaign that they were doing was they have the chicken wings next to the waffle like the upside down shoe and they got the oh dude 
when I saw this shit, I started freaking out. I am such a nerd because I, I was like, this is one of the best marketing campaigns I've ever seen. I was going with my roommates. I'm like, go check this out. They're like, dude, we literally don't care about you or your sneakers at all. <laughs> Let me pull this up. Um, did you find it on GOAT? Yeah, the hyper adapts were uh, one of them were going. You could buy new for a thousand dollars. Eleven hundred dollars. I'm sorry. So, oh, eleven. That's not even a bad markup considering their original price. Well, the original, yeah, the yeah, the original price was seven twenty. And you can actually get some of them under retail right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I really like this picture. It's, it's cool. so good. I hate the shoes, but the picture's great. I mean, whatever. They're Vans. Would you wear Vans? Uh, I can only do uh, Skate High. That's the only van I could do. Any other van is like too little material for me. Yeah. I like my shoe to be fucking wrapped like a coffin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could have picked a better. Let me see him. Yeah, that maybe coffin's not that good of a right. metaphor there. Okay. Maybe if I said a blanket or multiple blankets. Nope, still not good. Yeah, still not good. We, uh, Guys, I am off. I thought I was doing pretty good, and I'm actually not. My brain is fucking dead today. I really want these shoes. Some people, <laughs> for some people, this is going to be their first episode, and um, <laughs> we really, really hope that you'll go back to listen to any other episode. We were much more energetic, well, no, these and shoes we are plan good. to be in the future. These shoes are good. I like these shoes. I want these shoes. That's so awesome, dude. <laughs> I love a good story. I mean, yeah, it's dude, it's fucking great. Is Sweet Trick really that big? Like, where is the chain? Is it just in New York? I yeah, there's, I think there's just two. There's one in Brooklyn and there's one in Lower East Side on Ludlow. And they have enough like power in the market to get a collab with Vans. Like, how does that? Ha- that's confusing. It's, well, it's part owned by Nas, as far as my understanding. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think there's a lot of power within uh, the <laughs> the board meetings. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, who everyone who's on the board of directors, I'm sure, is pretty powerful in that, right? Right. Uh, powerful quote, you know, like just popular. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think a lot, of, Becky. It's it's funny. You, a lot of stores that you may not think would have enough quote unquote juice to get a collab yeah. get collabs. Like there's, um, there's a there's a I, off the top of my head, Jordan Brands collab with a couple stores sometimes that you're like. Oh wow! Like uh, like Soulfly in Miami, like you yes. know, like there, like there's certain. And, and granted, yeah, I think Jordan has like a relationship with the owners there. I think they're like his uh, wife's family, from what I've heard. But like certain stores, like and I'm once again, that's a bigger scale. But like, what is it, Sweet Chicken and, and Vans? Yeah, like I could I could totally see that because Nas's name is, you know, that somewhere in there. Yeah, Nas brings enough. Like it's enough name recognition. And that's the first thing that you said. Like Sweet Chicken, you're like, oh, that, isn't that Nas like restaurant? Yeah, and he's one of the greatest rappers, you know. So yeah, and Nas also has a part of Mass Appeal, which is a very uh, I would say like mid to high tier uh blog news blog right okay so that 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 outlet in itself is a good enough thing because they're going to push all that you know what i mean so like how big is this release is this going like national or are they only selling the shoes in new york like like how big is this collab um i wouldn't know how to def- categorize it but i'm assuming it's a very new york centric uh collab so i bet a lot of stores around here i bet maybe they'll sell them at sweet chick Maybe. Let me look at this article real quick. You'd have to have so much space in your <clears throat> restaurant to house like that many <laughs> know, boxes of well, shoes. May, I mean, the sweet chick... Actually, sweet chicks are kind of small. Maybe I'm full of shit. I'm so full of shit, guys. Uh, Just interest. I'm interested to know, like, what do you think the purpose of that collab is? Is it cross-promoting with, like, Nas? Or is it... Um, is it just like appealing to sneakerheads for like something small and niche or small and niche? I mean, it, this is a story. So now I'm looking here. So I guess I wasn't that far off. So they're hitting Foot Lockers on 420. So Saturday. Oh, this is an early podcast, guys. By the way, Happy Easter. Um, we were all doing shit on Sunday because uh, it's a family holiday. So, um, but then there's a pop up that's going to be on Ludlow Street, which is where the Sweet Chick in Manhattan is. Okay. So uh, April 20th at 7178 Ludlow Street, there's going to be a pop up. But that's right. That's literally right next to where the sweet chick is. Cool. But yeah, I saw that shit and I got, I got, I got nerded out. Yeah, I mean, you know, once again, I mean, a lot of you do, a lot of people do collabs and they don't have to be like super huge. But I think this is, I mean, if you like Vans and I think even if you're not a sweet chick fan, these have like enough. 
like a pill for people just be like, I fucks with those. Yeah. Tanner, you like them. Yeah, I like them. I'm thinking, should I go go there or not? You should. You should be our um our correspondent for the uh, pop up event. Yeah. You can I think come back and report next week. That'd be great. Yeah, I, I might. You can do an intern show there. I might do that. Oh <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> Guys, Tanner's press now. <laughs> You're part of the press crew. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just gonna be like walking with my big camera, like, hello. <laughs> yep, yep. $65 retail, too. That's, that's not, not bad. Whoa. Oh, damn. That's almost in your price range. Wow. I think we could help him out a little. I'll, yeah. I'll help you out. I'll throw some money at it for you, Tanner. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, all right, go to my GoFundMe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gold six five dollars by after this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your Venmo? Tell people to send you money. Um, my Venmo is a little kinky. Just send me at least I don't know. If you don't send me more than ten bucks, don't even bother. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you bougie broke piece wow, of shit. What that was a meme. That was a meme. That was a meme. It was a joke. That was a meme. Yeah, the jape, a joke. Never mind. I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was also nerding out reading about how Polo has been making um, polos out of recycled plastic. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah, so Ralph has been, not himself, but they, I guess they've been, <laughs> they've been getting a bunch of landfill uh, plastic shit and reusing them to make the entire polo out of the plastic. Great. Yeah. I was fucking hyped. The sustainable shit's really coming in. People are loving it. Yeah. yeah. I think it looks... I think people are... <clears throat> taking a lot more care into like the durability of the material as well. Yeah. And garments like are lasting longer in my opinion. There was a long stretch of time like I think probably from like 2000 2010 where garments were just trash. I found like things were falling apart so quickly. Construction was failing. I feel like that's when direct to garment became a big thing. I think people wanted fast turnarounds on stuff. Totally. So they were just fucking like, yo, which whatever, just give it to me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even like high end brands, some stuff would like Club Monaco stuff would fall apart on me too, and those aren't cheap. Banana Republic, I think, was fall- my my roommate in college used to work at a Banana Republic, and uh, he would like have to wear the stuff because he would just get it because he worked there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But he it would only last like a year if I'm remembering correctly. Dude, uh, all my Banana Republic stuff from like 2006 <laughs> to 2011, shit was just breaking apart, bro. Yeah. Like all the time, and like I was I was like a big Banana Republic fan. Yeah, same. <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah, They used yeah. to make really amazing mm. goods, like things that would last a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not so much. That little era there. Yeah, I had a bunch of like sweaters and like um, just a lot of different shit from them. Really? I yeah. can't imagine you in a fucking Banana Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What to, year was this you said? This is like 2000, I'm going to say 2007, 2008 to like 2000. Ah, this is the Kanye influence a little bit, no? Um, It's... It's just the mix of yeah. It was like a mix of different things I was into. Yeah, getting the prep up. But like definitely like you know I definitely wore a lot and you know I was going out a lot. So like you know, I mean I've learned how to wear hoodies to like places now like like upscale places and get away with it. But like <laughs> nice. back in the days you know you had to have like a nice little sweater or a button up. So Banana Republic was the go to. All right, wait. Let me propose an idea. Mm-hmm. I have an idea. Mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna do it anyway. Oh. <laughs> no, but I this kid that at Sprayground he. So stuff himself. So one of the reasons he got hired was to make samples of crazy shit for uh, whatever music video event, whatever. It doesn't matter. But I was like, yo, can you make a hoodie out of suit material? He was like, yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. How fire would that be? It's not going to hang well. No. No, it's not going to look good. But I just like the idea of a suit hoodie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? What do you think? Where are you going to wear it? Yeah. Uh, That's how I would wear it to weddings. Oh, and funerals. Wow. And funerals. <laughs> funerals. <laughs> well, yeah, you need to wear suits to that stuff. <laughs> funerals. Is it going to have the front pocket thing? Oh, it's, it a yeah, it's a kangaroo. It's a kangaroo for sure. Oh, wow. It's not a zip up. It's a pullover. Oh, it's a pullover. What's the inner material? The Is pullover. It like the- oh, no. <laughs> the pullover, yeah. Oh, man. I thought it was like at least open like more than you're like a button up underneath. No, no, you. No, it's a pullover hoodie. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I want to wear a hoodie every time I have to do something. Really? Yeah. yeah I like wearing it. I like wearing it. But I also like, yeah, I like hoodies. Yeah. I mean, hoodie. I, I, if I could live in a hoodie, I would. So I want a hoodie for every occasion. And sometimes you need to wear a suit. Could you wear a tie over it? That's a good question. I never thought about the tie. <laughs> I guess I would try to make it so you, there'd be a tie option. Yeah. Wait, what if instead of the drawstring in through the hood part, it's the Becky tie with the through, blicky. 
And then you can Just. hang it loose or tie it up, and it looks like good either way. Hell yeah. You could do a bow tie. <laughs> bow. Actually. Bow tie hoodie would look I, dope. I do bow ties anyway. Yeah. yeah. Bow tie. Hey, I like this idea better now. See? <laughs> Smart sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky. <laughs> Lucky me and Becky were here no. to gas you up. <laughs> no. No. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> what color should we make it? Uh, maybe like a... Like black. Like either black or... I'm I was thinking like gray. Like a pinstripe or a houndstooth. Pinstripe! Something to, sh- something to show like, like angular construction nicely. Because mm. you got to match up those patterns and show that it's been done with care. What do you think, Al? Pinstripe? Uh, yeah, I can go to I can go to a nice little pinstripe. Yeah, but they don't look too Italian. Mm. Pinstripe's an Italian thing, isn't it? No, it's a suit thing. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Never mind. I take what, it back. what pants are you wearing with the suit pants? Suit pants? Okay, I don't know if you're going that far. That maybe you're going to try. Like, you think I'm gonna roll up with my fucking like, suit cargo. hoodie and then some fucking cargo shorts? <laughs> I, I don't know what you're trying to fall. Camo it's cargo so shorts. Odd to me that you're willing to wear suit pants but not a suit jacket. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly go. my point. Yeah. Like, exactly why my not point. just do what you're supposed to do? No, because I don't have to. <laughs> I want to be myself. Okay. So it's just purely rebel. No, it's, no. This is, all of that comfort <laughs> shit was a joke. It's really just because you want to be a rebel. No, I, I, I wear hoodies for comfort. I'm built for comfort, not speed. I want to be able to wear a hoodie at every occasion. And sometimes I need to wear a suit, so it's time for a suit hoodie. Okay. Which will now have bow tie uh, <laughs> fucking drawstrings. <laughs> Lawrence, you look like you hate me right now. No, well, he does. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just no. no. I'm just enjoying where this is going. This is very interesting, Chris. We're Wait. Watching the genius at work. That's right. <laughs> this is our professional streetwear designer, Chris Cheney. I'm the designer in the room. I'm like, let's just make suits and hoodies together. <laughs> like my thought process, guys. Love it. What else can we make a hoodie that normally... We're, all right, so what are the occasions you have to wear something? Like normally that you can't, like you have to dress up for. Swimming. Swimming. I can't make a hoodie for swimming. <laughs> that's actually dressing down. Da- that's not. You had, to, okay. you, had to, you had to put a costume on. That's true. Are you calling it a costume? Interesting. A bathing costume. A ba- <laughs> what else? The Met Gala. I'm wearing my hoodie. Okay. My suit hoodie. Met Gala. Um, yeah, that's a place where you have to dress up. Yeah. I mean, Virgil yeah, wearing you, Jordans. No, but you definitely have to dress up at the Met. The gala. Guys, we don't go to enough cool places. Where else do you have to dress up? I don't know. It's, it's weird how we can't think of this. All right, so weddings, funerals, uh, a job interview? Yeah. Yeah. How can I wear a hoodie at a job interview? Well. Just a hoodie that says hire me in like a, a comic horrible fans you, can't, you can't wear a hoodie at a job interview. I have. And did you get the job? No. Mm. I, wore, actually, I wore a Pornhub hoodie to an interview and got a job. <laughs> Was that I guess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I actually am not a... I can't interview. I, I don't interview well. Someone has to be like, oh shit, I know you're dope. You have to come here and work. Really? Yeah, because when I interview, it's bad. I can't contain the professionalism within the allotted time that I need to have it. Yeah, because you probably start off the interview with, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is up? <laughs> Yo, I definitely swear. Oh, I swear too. In your job at interview? Mm-hmm. In your yeah. Job interviews, really? Yeah, I, I try not to. It's it was like when I did CBS, dude. I can't, I can contain it for so long, but eventually one slips, and it's usually not a good one. You know what I mean? One time I interviewed at a place, uh, and I didn't know this at the time, but the guy was gay, mm-hmm. and I called him a cocksucker. But right. I said it was it was a, like upward inflection. He was showing me this stuff. I'm like, you cocksucker, this stuff looks great. And then after the girl who like brought me in was like yeah he's gay and you called him a cocksucker and i was like well i guess we'll uh we'll hang out sometime soon <laughs> i'll talk to you later jeez chris i like, can't contain it you can't be professional like super professional for 15 minutes 15 i could do half hours where it starts where it get dicey wow yeah because then also <laughs> sometimes what? i sometimes i try to make jokes too and then you can no one that's the worst thing to do even slip with that's what she said in there. Everyone's like, well, oh, okay. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I say it without thinking, though. You know? Really? Yeah. 
I never interview well. This is probably why you buy so many shoes that you don't wear. You don't have great self control. <laughs> um, wait, right, that was Tanner. funny. Cut. That was like funny. Uh, you know, you know what? I'm willing to that was kind funny. of accept. That was a joke. Yeah, yeah. I will accept half of that. <laughs> <laughs> I I know what you meant, and I will accept half of what you meant. All right, all right. And now I will reevaluate how I think about things moving forward. <laughs> Thank you, Tanner, for your constructive criticism. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> Therapy. <laughs> Lawrence okay. was just too afraid to say it. I saw it in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you're great at keeping it professional. Yeah. You keep it professional even when it's just you and me. Yeah, I keep it yeah, I try to keep it very yeah. professional. That's who I am. Even when you say something negative about what's around you, you like come up like and no one's around. You'll come closer to me and whisper like, Yo, I don't know how I feel. I'm like, dude, it's just me and you. And no, you're like, Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that, that's who I am, man. You know, you gotta be professional, you know, and in certain in certain situations. Yeah, I can't. You know. I can't. I think it's so weird because, like, you know, as stand-ups, everyone's, you know, everyone's like, He's, you got to be fucking a clown all that's not a clown, but, like, you know, where's your lightheartedness and where's this and that? And, like, I go on, like, when I go on meetings, like, with people, like, and, and shit, I'm very, like, still, I'm like, yeah, well, and I still have my super professional voice on, and I could tell sometimes they're like, yo, just drop an F-bomb real quick. But I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not who I am. I'm going to be, you know, and this is how I grew up. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't grow up like that. Nah, I, yeah, I'll be mad professional. Yeah, I'm not professional at all. Every time I work be somewhere, professional. <laughs> be, be shut up, professional. Dinner. Every time I work somewhere too, I end up getting everybody to rally and not be professional with me. Really? Yeah, start off small, but then by the time I leave the company, everyone's making horrible jokes. Horrible in the idea that like it's no, you shouldn't say that in an office. <laughs> And now you don't work in one. <laughs> now I don't work in. Bum, bum, oh, da, I, I never told the listeners that bum, I left Spray Ground. Yep. <clears throat> Guys, so, I left. Chris is currently interviewing. If you would like to <laughs> listen to him swear at your boss, please send us an email. And he will definitely swear at your motherfucking boss. <laughs> Should I? Is it, <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, DM me, and I will make a video cussing out your boss that I've never met and don't know. <laughs> he will definitely do that shit. Uh, no, I left on my own accord, though. I'm, I still have a great relationship with them, but I'm going to try to do the independent route again, which I got a couple contracts with some companies I won't say yet. I'll tell you guys. I'll give you a breakdown maybe later. Mm. But um, After he gets that check. <laughs> no, I'm, get, I, I'm good. No, no, all the checks. All the Yeah, once I obtain every check, I'll yes. let you guys know. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Well, I'm happy for you, bro. Thanks, man. You guys have known this for a while, but thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been uh, dogging Concerned. you. <laughs> Just joking. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yep. what do we think about Kodak Black? Oh, uh, yeah. who was he talking shit about? Uh, T.I. T.I. He, he's, got, he's got arrested today. He did? A couple of days ago for like, uh, like, Transporting like I think drugs and guns into. Wait, was, I thought he was in jail. Wait, yeah, he got in, out of jail? No, he's. In, I think he's in jail. Well, he. Well, yeah. I thought for like a, he was going to be in jail for another like two more years. He was. Well, he's, he's got out. like a rape charge or some right. shit against him. Alleged rape charge. Right. I thought he was. A, I thought he was convicted of that. No. Nah, he was going to court for that in South oh, Carolina. But like, uh, yeah, that boy just can't stay out of trouble. Yeah, and then every, every the whole Los Angeles wants him dead. You know what I mean? For yes. The stuff he did with Nipsey and 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 now yeah, and now this he was arrested at the border for gun and drug charges. Kodak Black. You know what? I thought it was very interesting because a lot of people are defending, and I, I agree with them. Um, some negative comments about Nipsey rest in peace. Um, but they're trying to get people fired over it, and you know, it as liberals. Well, no, I don't want to say we're liberal because I, I don't know what what I am. I see a lot of people like try to do the firing thing on both sides and they mm -hmm. both shit on it both sides. So mm -hmm. I'm like, why are you trying to get everyone fired? Mm -hmm. Let him let him speak. You know what I mean? This country is about free speech. Like if they don't like Nipsey, I mean, they're wrong, but like, let him say whatever. Just don't, why are you getting people fired? Yeah. I mean, and they have to go interview again. And they can't. Can you... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Kodak Black's going on too. No, he's not. He's, he is not. He's good. I don't even, yeah. I don't even know if he could read, but either way, <laughs> I don't think so. That's, that's Tanner's guy. His, his, you like Kodak Black? Not really. Oh, okay. Cool. I, I thought he was in jail. Like, I don't know much about him. I just, like, the most Kodak Black I've ever listened to is uh, the his cypher in, like, the freshman 2015 verse. Really? That, yeah. When he said... That was a good cypher, if I remember. Why, who picked this sorry-ass beat? That's, that's all I remember. Kodak Black. <laughs> 
Speaking of Kodak Black, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, Game of Thrones is. <laughs> That's such a great transition. Like, it's so great. Wait, I, no, I, no, I don't know. You guys, Becky, you watch you watch Game of Thrones? No. Tanner, yeah. Chris, no. Lawrence, no. Uh, so Tanner's the correspondent for this segment. Yes. Talk about it. What's going? It's the final season, right? Yeah, it's the final season. Um, it's cool. The show's going on. Do you want me to give like spoilers? What do you want me to do? Wait, here? shout out, <laughs> shout, out, shout out to A Life because they did a Game of Thrones collab last year cool. or two years ago. Oh. What was it? Uh, it was just a hoodie. It said Game of Thrones. Alive. It was oh, tight. Okay. Yeah, super clean. But keep going. Uh, Donald Trump made a Game of Thrones graphic and tweeted it. Yeah, I saw that. that you saw that? Me, that shit had me crying, yo. <laughs> Wait, he made it? Because I don't know if he, he didn't make he it, didn't but make he it. posted Come it. On, he, he can't. He didn't make it. <laughs> he doesn't want to use I love computer. the idea of Trump in Microsoft Paint going like, I'm going <laughs> to... Wait, it, what, what's the graphic? I didn't even see this shit. Oh, I, I don't have my phone. It's Just a, go to his Twitter. It's, yeah, like it's, it's, pen, it's a pen tweet. It's fucking... <laughs> he pinned it? He pinned it, yeah. Trump, <laughs> Trump pinned it. Pinned tweet. I can't believe this is what he does with his time. Did he fucking pin this? He fucking like he's like, I know about social media. I'm gonna pin this at the top. Oh yeah, I, the first thing I opened, like the the home screen. Oh, where to go? It's game. HBO over. responds to. Oh no, I just switched. It's a HBO response to. Uh, <laughs> so Trump's it's like tweet. it's like the game. It's like the Game of Thrones uh, font, and then it says no collusion, no obstruction for the haters and the radical left Democrats. Yo, I was fucking. <laughs> Wait, no, you had to show. You had to show the picture though. The right. picture. Tanner, why are you sure tweeting? Hi, I want to die. I one day ago because I wanted to die. It's a it's a mood. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, young motherfuckers, Joe. On everything I love, I hate you, young game. motherfuckers, Joe. <laughs> game over. Look at yeah, this. Game over. Oh shit. I hate you, young motherfuckers. And he's like in front of like he's like in a snowy background. It's so shit. It's yeah, so God amazing. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, uh, that's the Game of Thrones update. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is such a weird episode. No, oh, this is a funny. This is great. This is a We're funny so episode. Stupid. I yeah. like this episode. <laughs> Wait, yo, you want to talk about the um the walk the dog uh, dunks? Have you seen those? No. <laughs> so um, it's this is also coming out four twenty. A bunch of shits going on four twenty. Uh, what was the brand that did? Basically, it's based off a dog walker cannabis strain, and uh, it's also based around the idea of dogs because they have like this little shit stain on the bottom it's supposed to be shit mm-hmm. um it's, it, it, they kind of look like safaris they're weird here let me, let me show you oh cute i guess <laughs> i like how sbs are like trying to make their comeback they are really trying real hard they're like you know i think you got guys like travis scott trying to push sbs and stuff like that but there's nothing that beats like sbs from like 15 years ago it comes with a little doggy bag for your the shit, and it comes with a little dog tag on it too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Can I ask you guys why you hate SBs so much? I love SBs. I just don't skate anymore. Is it because it's like a th- like less construction in the shoe? Like, because you're always talking about wanting your foot to feel like super wrapped and like um, tailored. Uh, the SBs have like larger pieces of. Padding. You they, know what I mean? Like yeah. they're just not as they're not as uh, structured. Well, I'm gonna say this about SBs. I think uh, they're very comfortable because yeah. they have the you know like they have the padding for like skateboarders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, me personally, I think I'm I'm like like when you me loving like being in the sneakers so much, I kind of got to that point where I was like I'm the nostalgia like oh man like you know if if the boxing pink then I don't because like SBs like change their their box colors all the time like for different mm-hmm. eras, and I'm like all right I remember you know oh three oh four when I was in the SBs and now I just feel like there's not too many SBs I get excited for yeah there are a pair of Jordan one uh, SB dunks that are coming out in May I'm very excited for those. But on a whole, you know, it go, I mean, I don't know. I, I go through, you know, like highs and lows where I like SBs and I'm like, ah. I mean, it got to the point with me. It's like, so since I don't skate anymore, you might as well get a one. You know what I mean? That that was my thought with it. I guess that was Why? my like, because uh, usually colorways and stuff for ones were better than they were for SBs for a while. Hmm. SBs was a function buy versus a fashion buy. Yes, skateboarding. Yes, Becky, I, I agree with Chris on that. Skateboarding oh. sneakers used to be like for the skateboarders. Like if you didn't skateboard, then what the fuck were you doing in our lane? Yeah. And then Nike realized that, or you know, and just in general, skateboarding companies realized that 
people want to wear SBs. That's that's me. Like I used to hang out with skateboarders, but not wear what they wore because I wasn't skating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now that I see stuff that they used to wear like available to me and lots of more people wearing them like nobody's judging me for it now no not at all I'm like a 32 year old woman of course I'm not skating down the street but <laughs> the shoes are fire I think they're cool yeah I yeah. mean the last uh, SBs I bought were the it was just because it was Street Fighter themed they were based off Ryu from Street Fighter mm-hmm. I forget what year they came out but that was the only time that and then actually you know what you know it's funny because I was like since I bought them I was like oh, I'm gonna try to skate again and then I think I fell like within the first hour and then I was like, yeah, not for me. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, SBs, like I said, they're super comfortable. I, like I can walk yeah. for days in skateboarding sneakers. Yeah, they're the best. Yeah. Skate shit is always the best. Comfort. It's nice that there's less gatekeeping happening for like those kind of styles. Because I think a lot of people could benefit from like having that comfortable of a shoe. It's literally like the best everyday shoe, in my opinion, mm-hmm. to walk around the city and like have a busy day. I would wear an SB. SB? Like, no question. You know what else I don't like about sometimes about SBs and, you know, certain, uh, like a lot of these skate shops are, you know, they're very, like, they're mom and pop skate shops that yeah. get these sneakers. So sometimes they will mark up the price on a very hyped release because Nike, there's a suggested retail and then the skate shops are like, fuck your suggested retail. We got to pay our rent. This yeah, month. fuck your suggestions. And we don't you, play that shit. Your $80 or $100 suggestion, we're going to charge 250 for these uh, skateboarding sneakers, especially the, the the hype ones. Right. And um that's one thing, you know, I don't like about the the quote unquote the skateboarding like Nike skateboarding culture like we're like you said these these mom and pop shops, they don't really always make money. Yeah. on skateboarding shoes except for like the really like hype ones so then they charge you out to ask for a good pair i bought a pair of lance mountains okay uh the lance mountain uh they did a it's basically a jordan one but the the guy the skater he uh he painted uh the sneakers white there's like a white paint and as you skate it chips away the paint and then it goes into so i there was a skateboard this is like 2014 ish and I, there's a skateboard shop in brooklyn and i i was like yo you guys have a size 12 in the lance mountains and he was like yeah we still have them left and i was like the suggested retail is i think like 120 or whatever yeah and i'm like how much and he's like oh 275 it's ridiculous and that's that's what i'm saying about like a lot of these like the skate people they cash in on the culture yeah of the and the popularity of certain models and then you're like as the you know i can tell you so many like skateboarding shoes that like there was a, a suggested retail that when you go to the shop you're like oh really you're gonna charge me 80 dollars over what the suggested is just to so you can cash in but they do it all the time are Especially, you guys saying that that doesn't happen in other shoe genres oh no it hap- happens all the time there's a store right around the corner from here that does it you can walk by Jimmy Jazz and then you go a couple, it's like an independent one and they'll have the same shoes, but the one at the independent spot's like $100 more. Right. I, I will say you're, it, it happens to me more in skateboarding culture that because I will agree with. a lot of the stores are independently like own shops. Yeah. Right. Just a smaller market, you're saying. Yes. Also, a concept like that is very rare in the sneaker world. So, like, when you get a good... I think we talked about it before, too. Like, the Statue of Liberties. Mm-hmm. There was a green one that yeah, you skated in it. Yeah. Oh, he does? Yeah, he wore them on stage. I got the best pick of him. Are they are they chipped at all? Did he try to do anything in them? Like, is there wear to them? No, they're beautiful. They're, like, pristine. All green? Yeah. Wow. I think he wore them for the first time. Really? Yeah, I got a good pick on my website. He undead stocked the liberties for what? what What's your show? website? Remember to be happy dot com. Yeah, Tuesday go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like those specialty concepts, it's in the skate world especially, it's like yeah, they're gonna bump that up way high because well, they don't get that many. I think based on the amount of hype that certain skateboarding shoes have, remember, like, uh, like a shoe like that is not gonna be in a in a Foot Locker or you know, you know, it's. It's, you gotta be friends with someone. You got yeah, in the skateboard in, in those skateboarding shops, you gotta know someone or you gotta be plugged in a lot of times. Yeah, that's the real plug. Is a skateboarding shop? Chip. Yeah, because a lot of the times skateboarding shops, they're like either they're gonna like they're gonna sell to the people that support them and and buy all their shit, you know, from decks to whatever throughout the years. And they're gonna be like, hey, and then you know, and then you gotta know people. So like, as a random person, sometimes you're just like. Oh, I want these, then you're not gonna get them at a skateboard yeah. shop. 
I do like that Nike has like a SB women's division now. Like it's it's nice to be able to get shoes in my size cuz like Yeah, for sure. Like I I'm sitting here everything we talked about today I could never get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's nice to get smaller size designer sneakers. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm seeing Nike is selling, you know, three and a half, like, you know, four, like it's. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, you damn right. Because there's a there's a market where I think, you know, back in the days they would be like, oh, well, we're just going to make these women's shoes for women, these pink or turquoise. Yeah. And now women are like, no, we want. Yeah. I mean, we we got to get like, like Chris was saying earlier, as we, as you get older, you want to have like the, the subtle flash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of like women's shoes previous to the last couple of years, in my opinion, they were designed for like eight, 16, 18 year old girls. Mm-hmm. The you basis know, like, of a lot of women's designs at companies, because it's mostly men's focus, but when they start doing women's stuff, it's shrink it and pink it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I agree shrink with Shrink and that. pink. That's the first thing that design companies will do. Or, I mean, you know, companies will do in general. Right. So, like, yeah, anytime they try to enter in that space, it's like either the baby blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking the pink, uh, v- varies of pink. Yeah, it's just like they just try to recolor it so it's like a four year old girl would like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Um, wait, hold on. There was one thing I did want to talk about. Oh, dude, we gotta talk about the fucking Hot Wheels thing. Yeah, the Hot, Supreme. Yeah, the Hot Wheels, man. Yo, <laughs> this is this shit is crazy. They, I don't know. <laughs> they're marketing it like they blew up a. Hot Wheel car to make it a drivable car, but mm-hmm. it, it's just a car that they have Supreme on now. But they came up with this little Hot Wheel Supreme branded uh, mm-hmm. toy, mm-hmm. and then they also co- accompanied it by with an actual car that says Supreme on it. Cool. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm telling you, man, they will put their fucking name in on anything, anything. They don't give a fuck, dude, because they know that this is you know they can do whatever they want. How much was it for the car? For what the the uh, the real one or yeah the, no the, uh, both we should talk about the prices of both because well, both are too expensive. Well, the, the Hot Wheels one was thirty bucks, uh, thirty or forty bucks for one Hot Wheel car. That's ridiculous. Really, I never, I don't, I don't remember purchasing a Hot Wheel car. How much are they normally? Um, good question. I don't know off the top of my head, but thirty seems obscene. Let's see. Really? Yeah, Th- for thirty dollars for a little fucking car, dude. I feel like those are five dollars. No, you used to be able to buy them in packs. You used to buy a little thing. It was like the storage unit. Yeah, no, it, that right. thirty bucks is insane. Hold on, Hot Wheels. We are also talking about the company that sold people a brick for forty bucks. So, That's true. You know, we were talking about a company that just sold a six dollar band aid. You know, so you know. And if you Google Hot Wheels, all that's on here is the Supreme shit. Now, hold on, let me go to their website real quick. But how how much did the full car cost? Did you have that? Too? Well, it's a one it's a one of one, so I'm sure oh, I don't you know I don't it's think not being sold probably not. No, the fact that they did a little custom job on that though is pretty fire, but it's mm-hmm. still ridiculous that it's even happening. Chris is having the hardest time navigating this. Web My brain doesn't website. work. <laughs> My brain is fucking having a rough time today. All right, hot toys for spring. Tanner's just watching me fucking be stupid on my phone. Oh, yeah. I think we can all agree that thirty dollars is a little bit much for a toy car. Yeah, dude, for a, a hot, single one. Yeah, no, a Hot Wheels twenty pack. But so you get twenty lot. is twenty one dollars. Okay, so mm-hmm. you can get twenty. For twenty, dude. But do any of them say Supreme on it? There you go. No, you can write Supreme on him. Nah, ain't the same. Ain't the same. Did ain't you the- did you use Hot Wheels as a kid? Were you a Hot Wheels kid? Nah, I don't even think I put. Maybe I don't remember playing with Hot Wheels. Yeah, I used to be the kid that like had, put barter myself in my room and then like make the whole thing go around the whole shit in my room. Oh really? That's uh, the nerdiest shit you've ever fucking said. Bro, yeah, he said some more. Nerd- <laughs> he said some more nerdy. I've shit definitely said that. nerdier things than that. You yeah. haven't known him the whole time. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have it go, like, go under my bed and try to get it to go over my bed, try to have all the jumps and shit. What about now? Now, <laughs> no, Tanner. <All> right. <laughs> no, now I'm in my room watching anime trying to figure out how to get a Twitch account to work. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> Yo, if I start a Twitch, will you come to my house and we'll play video games? Sleep. Uh, Sure. Yeah, sleep. Nice. What do you mean sleep? Shut up, Tanner. I didn't ask you. <laughs> no, but you can come. Thank you. Um, Are you a gamer, Tanner? Nope. All right. I played Minecraft once. That I fully believe. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good time. 
Have we run out of ideas? I think we. I think we're definitely. Uh, Wait, I want to say um, this has been a bit of a slow uh, episode. Also today, I put out the intern show, and the whole like middle segment. I'm saying fuck a middle segment. I called. Like I was too lazy for that, and then come here for the exact same. Just like it's everyone. It's just like oh, I don't want to fucking do anything. Yep. Um, I mean, I did kind of want to talk about. I had a couple other things, but I don't know if you sure, want to get into what, it. What did you want to talk about, Chris? Uh, Reebok retroing the uh, Alien Stomper. I don't know if you care about that though. Nope. Oh, no. Damn. Do you even know what shoe I'm talking all. about? No. Oof, that's how much he doesn't even care. Yeah, he doesn't care about this shit what? at all. Say what's on your mind, Chris. No, they, I mean, they're, I, I like that shoe a lot. It's the shoe that uh, the chick wore in Alien 2. Okay. So it was one of the first like major product placement things that was done in a way where it was similar to Marty McFly and the Nike Mag, but they actually made the shoe into production at the at the time. They were retroing it. I think it was cool. Okay. Yeah. I... I then maybe a discussion about sneakers and movies would ensue, but you know, didn't really get there. Sure. Well, what do you what do you have? <laughs> Nothing. I was hoping maybe you would come with something, and then then we would do a back and forth, and it'd be great content. And then you know, now we're here, and it's. <laughs> well, that, that what makes shoes? Sense. What shoes was Forrest Gump wearing while he ran across? Those were the Cortez. The Cortez, mm-hmm. pretty strong shoes. Pretty strong shoes. That's right. Hey, what else you got, Tanner? You're carrying this one right oh, now. Come You're on. carrying no, this I was, segment. I was just trying to help you. No, you, you keep going. What other shoes from movies do you know? I don't know. Oh, what about the Into the Spider Verse? They they drew the shoes. Oh yeah, that was a great shoe too. I like those. I didn't want to buy them, but I like the <laughs> idea that they made the shoe from the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Anything else? What else we got? No, I think we should put the listeners out of their misery. I think I might edit this last little segment out. Wait, yeah. how much time are we doing? All right. Um, no, this segment was baller. This is <laughs> no, the best segment not. we've ever done. Yeah. Don't dare I'm edit. definitely going to listen to this whole episode and Dude. see where I can edit some of this, this shit out. This segment should be weekly. <laughs> the, we should just like all stumble and think about, <laughs> about movie shoes. It's, I, think it's, I think we're good, Chris. I think we got to say goodbye. Yeah, I don't um, want to beat the dead horse, bro. Come so on. I think, can um, we leave? And the wedding crash. All right, wait. I'll, I'll, sh- I'll, sh- I'll show you these. You didn't even. Go ahead. Um, no, what are you gonna show? Better be good, Chris. Chris, you, you motherfucker. Got three really annoyed people hey, right what now. What the fuck wrap that, is wrap up? that shit up? No, beams. <laughs> wrap beams. That, wrap that, that podcast up. up. No, wrap beams that gavel up. Be- <laughs> <laughs> wrap that shit up, B. No, be- <laughs> <laughs> Beams did a cool collab with the MLB and it's over branded and I wanted to talk to you about it. MLB? Like the baseball? Yes. Who cares about baseball? A lot of people care about baseball. baseball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think it's dope because they like uh they have a thing where it, they made a jersey out of all of a bunch of other teams and it's like the Red Sox and the Yankees together in the one front thing. Oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. Or and I was going to talk about overbranded stuff and how this is way better than when Supreme did it with the NBA, but we can we can stop. I mean, Chris, you, <laughs> no, if we're going to do an it, hour to talk about it, yeah, but no, it, it, brought, you, no, you he, chose he, to he, bring he, up other he, topics. He, no, he thought this would be the little cherry on top that everyone would love. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they violating you right now, bro. I know. It's yo, okay. Yo, you a man first though. You gotta you gotta fucking fight to the death now, yo. <laughs> Yeah, I'm supposed to tr- keep dragging the podcast out Word, to, to fight my point. Uh, no, I'll, I'll let Tanner have that. He needs a win once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be taking all these L's. So, we want we want to thank you guys for listening. <laughs> This one's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, this one's interesting. Uh, all right. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for listening. My uh, make sure you rate, review, and uh, subscribe to us on uh, on uh, iTunes, and we're we're everywhere. We're SoundCloud. Uh, we're Spotify. on Spotify. Yeah. And um, I'm YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely got. YouTube. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely check us out on YouTube and shit. And um, Becky. Oh yeah. I'm at Human Places, the Easy Three. If you like stand up comedy, I'm a stand up comedy photographer. Yeah, go check out our website, guys. Yeah, dope pics. A lot of dope pics. Um, not that cheeny on all counts. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Happy Easter. Hope Happy you guys Easter. had a good Easter. This is coming up the day after Easter. I uh, hope you're wearing your nice Easter kicks. Those pastel colors are fire. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.
Okay. The duck is cold. The duck, cold. the duck is cold. Bye. Sub podcast was recorded at Remember to Be Happy Studios. All right, guys, leave us a review, five stars, and let us know what your favorite sneaker silhouette is. The duck is cold. <laughs>